Good morning, everybody. June 2nd, we're almost there, you guys, really. We have literally, like, let's see, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, done. Right? Look at that. Four days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, done. And then, if you are behind and you want to get caught up, let me know. By the way, anybody who's got everything in, will probably get an A. Everybody who's got everything in, will probably get an A. If you do not have everything in, you're not going to get an A. Uh, so get caught up. It's not that hard. Just get the stuff in. Um, so anyway, moving on. Let's take a look at yesterday's homework. My bad. I forgot to go over really. I forgot to talk about one thing in particular. So in the homework, uh, if I look at number four, five, and six. Okay. So anyway, by the way, here's the ratios for one, the ratios for two, the ratios for three. Okay. But for four, what happens is this. If you take this triangle, okay. You get a 90 degree angle, and it says sine of 90. The sine, the sine is 90 degrees. So you get 90 degrees as your angle. Your opposite over your hypotenuse, right? Well, it turns out that if you look at the other angle, this one's 81 degrees, right? Because these two have to add up to 90. Look at the other angle, then believe it or not, the sine of 9 degrees will equal the cosine of 81. Well, let's check it out. Let's just call this a b c so the sine of 9 is a over c and the cosine of 81 is also a over c so if you want to find the in terms of cosine you just subtract 90 from that angle cosine of 60 subtract 90 from that angle uh, was that cosine of what 13 um, and so the same thing on the other side if you want to do cosine subtract 90 sine of 75, subtract from 90, sine of 7. Oh, that's easy. Let's just subtract 90, the sine of 45. Okay. Anyway, I should have taught that. I should have showed that. Um, and by the way, here's the rest of the answers. We have 2.5 for x, 8.7 for y, 15.5, 47.6 for y, um, 12, I got 10.7, d is 14.7, 13 is 13.1, b is 30.9, 14, I get about 110 feet for, um, and I showed you how it sets up. So look at that. And then 15, or on, on 14B, it's 181.3, okay? Um, now, you have to know trigonometry. And if you don't learn trigonometry, we will go through it again next year in Algebra 2, but we'll go through it in much more detail. So it's just the basics, believe it or not. And a pre-calc, we spend probably half the year on trigonometry. It's pretty important stuff. Okay, so today, let's think about this, okay? Today's notes. So, gosh, let's take a look at a triangle, okay? So if we have a triangle and we don't know the angles, we can actually use trigonometry to find the angle. So our objective then is using right triangle trig to find find missing angles okay what it turns out to be is the inverse okay this little symbol means inverse inverse means in math like the opposite so yesterday what we did is we used the sine, cosine, and tangent of an angle to get a side. Today, we're going to use the sides to get an angle, okay? So that's the opposite. Today, we're going to use the, side, the sides to get an opposite. But what you need is you absolutely have to have these buttons here. These are the inverse buttons. So whenever you push sine inverse, let's take a look at it on the calculator, okay? There it is. See it in blue? Sine inverse cosine inverse, tangent inverse. Now, I know that negative, it's negative to the negative one, but that means inverse, okay? So whenever you use any of these blue buttons, and on my calculator, those are the blue buttons here, you're gonna find an angle. So these buttons, you find an angle. Now, if you don't have a fancy calculator, your your phone will do it, okay? But you, let me take a look. Phone wasn't working too well the other day, but I'll show you on the phone. I think it's working today, okay? So if I go to my calculator, calculator, and I gotta turn it, okay? Come on, turn for me. There we go, there we go, okay? So if I look at my my phone, I turn it sideways, I've got the sine, cosine, tangent here, but you've got to use the second. See the second button here? 
So if I go, for instance, 0.5 second sine, I get 30. What is 30? 30 is an angle, 30 degrees. On my calculator, it's much easier if you have a calculator or on a computer. I'm just going to type it in a blue button. Blue button. That's my blue button on my calculator. So I'm going to go, watch, I'm going to go sine inverse. See? Sine inverse of 0 0.5, and I get 30. Now, if you don't get 30 and get other, some other, other weird answer, you got to check your mode. Sure, you're in degree mode, not radio mode. Anyway, what is that 30? It's at 30 degrees. So if I were to draw this triangle, right? 1.5 the same thing as one half. So that means that the opposite is one and the hypotenuse is two, okay? So we found an angle, okay? So example two is the exact same question. Sine of theta. Well, theta is an angle. I don't know what that it is, but we want to find it. So if I want to find it, I'm going to have to, and I know that it, we're looking at that, picture right there, sine of some angle, opposite over hypotenuse, right? I'm going to have to use my inverse. So I'm going to go and say sine inverse of one half. And we just did that and you get 30 degrees. So when you use the inverse button, you're going to get an angle, inverse of a ratio of sides, okay? Now, look at this example. Okay, so this is kind of like a little bit what you're going to see in the book. So I've got theta. Now theta is an angle. Am I talking about angle B or angle A? Well, let's check it out. If sine is, oh gosh, almighty, 5 13. Sorry about that. My bad, Dave. There you go, fixed it. So 5 or 13, let's see, it has to be angle A because opposite over hypotenuse. Remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is my opposite over my adjacent. Okay, we have to have those memorized or written down somewhere. So this is, you got to know these, okay? So which angle is this? Well, 5 over 13 makes that opposite over hypotenuse. Can't be B because then its opposite is 12. Do you see that? So angle, it'd be angle A would be the answer to that one, okay? All right, now let's take a look at example 3. Exact same problem. It really is that we've been doing. Okay, here's theta. Um, if I use my two given sides, then from theta, I would throw my rock to the opposite side. And the two is my hypotenuse. Again, opposite hypotenuse, I've got to be using sine, not adjacent. I don't know anything about the adjacent. Um, not tangent, because again, I don't know anything about the adjacent. So if I set this up, opposite adjacent is sine. So I go sine of theta is equal to my opposite, which is one or if my hypotenuse is two, and again, it's exact same problem we've been doing. To find the angle, we take the sine inverse of one half, and again, if you use your calculator, you go sine inverse of one half, you end up with 30 degrees, okay? Now, so theta is equal to 30 degrees. Now, example four is different, okay? It's different because it's not gonna be 30 degrees. We don't know what it's gonna be. Okay, angle A, so angle A is here. Okay, that's what I want to find. Call it theta for right now, angle A. So to find angle A, let's first figure out what the name of the sides are. Okay, so if I'm here at A, angle A, I'm going to throw my rock to the opposite side of the triangle I like. That's my opposite side. A is the adjacent side because that's my hypotenuse. Okay, I don't know anything about the hypotenuse, so ignore it. Okay, but I do know the A is my adjacent side. Okay, so I want to find the angle. Right? I want to find the angle, I have to use one of these blue buttons. I'm either going to have to push sine inverse, cosine inverse, or tangent inverse. Okay? I've got to push one of these buttons. Well, let's see. If I have opposite and adjacent, these are the two sides I know, right? Opposite adjacent, opposite adjacent, it's got to be tangent. So let's set it up. I'm going to go tangent of theta equals the opposite, which is 15 over the adjacent, which is 8. Now, inside my calculator, when I push tangent inverse of 15 eighths, right, inverse, because I want to find the angle, then I'll be able to find out what the angle is. So inside my calculator, it's programmed all of these numbers in there, okay, all of these ratios. So, I know it's got to be tangent because I'm using the opposite and the adjacent. I don't know anything about the hypotenuse, so ignore that. It has to be tangent. So, I'm going to go tangent inverse, right? Because I'm looking for the angle of 
15 divided by 8, and I get an answer of about 61.9 degrees. So angle A is about 61.9 degrees. Okay, how's that? All right, turn the page. Let's take a look at the other side. Okay, so here, example 5, my favorite triangle, triangle PIG, because you can call them anything you want. So if I want to solve it, that means I have to find everything. I need to find everything. What does that mean? Well, I don't know angle I. I don't know angle P. And I know this little side, this side is called little I because it's opposite angle I. It's also PG, okay? I don't know that either, okay? Now, one of the things I can do to make this easy, is we can do the easy stuff first if you want. The easy stuff would probably be to find the y, because I can use Pythagorean's theorem. Remember, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That might be the easiest way. So the first thing maybe I might tackle first is to use Pythagorean's theorem, okay? So let's do the easy stuff. So I'm going to go i squared plus 12 squared equals 16 squared, right? A, I can just a, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or better yet, i squared plus 12 squared equals 16 squared, right? Now, let's go ahead and solve for i squared. So i squared is equal to 16 squared minus 12 squared, right? I'm just going to try and make this easy. So I subtract the 12 squared over here. And then if I use my calculator, let's see what I got. What about 16 squared minus 12 squared? Let's see. All right, so I get 112. So I've got a little i squared equals 112, and of course I'm going to take the square root of both sides to find out what i is, square root, square root, and then I'll get the square root of 112, and I get an answer of about, oh, 10.6, we'll round it as 10. Little i is approximately equal to 10.6, okay? Now, okay, we've got to find everything, find everything, okay? I know this side, i is about 10.6. I still have angle I or angle P, and it doesn't matter which one you pick first. I'm just going to choose angle I. Normally, if we're in class, I'd ask somebody, say, who wants to solve? Which one do you want? We're not in class. We're here. So I'll pick angle I. All right, if I'm going to pick angle I, again, I've got to come up with the names of the sides. I could use the 10.6, but it's approximate. I could, but it's not exactly 10.6. So I want to use the two sides that are given. I'm going to use the 12. And I want to use 16, but they have names. So from angle I, right? This is my hypotenuse, and this side is my adjacent side from angle I, okay? Little i is the opposite side. We don't want to do that. So I've got my, if I pick angle I, adjacent side is my 12, hypotenuse is my 16, so adjacent hypotenuse, adjacent hypotenuse, there it is. Adjacent hypotenuse, I've got to use. Um, cosine. So let's set it up. I'm going to go cosine of angle I, right? Instead of theta. How about I, okay? Is equal to, well, the adjacent side, because that's what it says. Adjacent over the hypotenuse, right? So the adjacent is 12 over the hypotenuse, which is 16. Now I need to find an angle. I need the angle. So to find the angle, I have to use my inverse button. Okay, I'm looking for an angle. I have to use my inverse. So I'm going to rewrite this as cosine inverse of 12 over 16, and that will give me angle I. Okay, that's how you do it. So let the calculator do the work, or your phone. It's kind of a pain on your phone. I'll show you how to do it in your phone here. Okay, so let me show you how to do it in your phone. It's, you have to do it backwards, okay? Hold on. i got to log in on my phone. If you have to use your phone, it's kind of a pain. Calculator's better. Okay, again, I flip my phone. Come on, flip, flip, flip. Come on, phone, flip for me. Come on, flip for me. Dang it, there you go. So, on my phone, what you gotta do first is you've gotta go 12 divided by 16. It's all backwards on your phone. 12 divided by 16. You get that decimal. Okay, equals. Okay, you get a decimal, right? And then I've gotta go second cosine. And, oh, I'm in the wrong mode. Do you see that? Weird. I gotta go radians to degrees clear. Let's try this again. Nope. Let's try this again. Well, okay, 12 divided by 16 equals. And then I gotta go second cosine. There we go. 41.4 degrees. Okay? So on a calculator it's kind of a pain. 
So angle I turns out to be about 41.4 degrees. Um, calculus is much easier if you have a decent calculator. I wish we were in class because I'd have these for us to use, but we're not, so we just have to figure it out, okay? So 12 divided by 16, and you get about 41.4, okay? So that's easy. So now if you know angle I is 41.4 degrees, then angle P, so we had to find everything. Angle P is pretty easy. I'm just going to subtract. I'm just going to go 90 degrees because these two angles are complementary, means they add up to 90. Uh, 90 minus 41.4 degrees, and that'll give me angle P. Okay, 90 minus 41.4, and I get an answer of about 48.6. So angle P is about 48.6 degrees. Okay, good. I solved everything. Now, Last but not least, a wheelchair ramp is built. Now the ramp is this. A lot of kids mess this up. That's the ramp. That's the ramp. It's built with a height of eight inches and a ramp length of 54. This is not the ramp length. A lot of kids miss this on the test because it's probably be on the test, but the ramp is here. Does that make sense? That's the ramp. Okay, now to be in code, your angle must be less than six degrees. So here's my angle, call it theta. All right. So, again, what you do is you have to find out what the name of these sides are. So here's my angle. That is my opposite side, right? Throw the rock to the opposite side of the, of the triangle leg. That's my opposite side. That's obviously my hypotenuse because it's opposite the 90. So that's my hypotenuse. So then, opposite hypotenuse. Uh, those are the two words I have. Opposite hypotenuse. Let's check it out. Okay, and opposite hypotenuse. Look at my notes. Up oh, sine. Opposite hypotenuse is sine. So I'm going to set up sine of theta is equal to 8 over 54 because it's opposite over hypotenuse. I need to find the angle, so I'm going to go sine inverse of 8 over 54. Okay, use my calculator, sine inverse, I'm using the inverse button, 8 divided by 54, and I get an answer of about 8.5. Ramp's too steep for grandma, they'll have to tear it down. Too steep, it won't make compliance, so no. Okay, now, finally, homework, and it's not too bad today. I'm going to have you do page 308 and 309, 1 to 11 all. Okay, 308, 309, 1 to 11 all. So on 1 and 2, you just have to figure out which angle they're talking about. 3, 4, 5, and 6, just use a calculator. Just type it in, sine inverse of 0 0.2, and you get an angle, okay? Um, seven, eight, you gotta solve the triangle. It means everything. You gotta find all miss three missing sides and eleven, you've got a story problem. So get this done and I'll talk to you tomorrow. We're almost finished. Woohoo! Yeah! So we'll be done. And summer vacation's gonna be here, whatever that means, right?